All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to cook dinner, and since it's Friday night, I decided to try to make some good decisions and be at home alone and spend some time reading because there was a lot of my life that I really focused on, like, self-improvement and healthy living and reading, and it just it gave me a foundation. And since I got out, and really especially since Courtney and I broke up, I've been focused on going out and doing things and trying to spend time with people, which I think is great, but I want to really get back to that core. I want to get back to that place that feels... Uh, comfortable and healthy and is focused on like the important thing. So tonight we're making steak in the air fryer. So I'm gonna do a marinade. I'm a really big fan of the combination of um, soy sauce and balsamic vinegar, which I think not everybody likes, but it really works for me. Um, so I'm gonna try a little bit of soy sauce. I know some people do marinades where they like uh, actually measure things, which probably makes sense. Uh, and I'm not there yet. But, um, the other thing I like about the soy sauce is you don't then add, have to add more salt because it has uh, plenty in there. But uh, Soy sauce and balsamic vinegar, and I used to always do like red peppers or spice. Um, that was when I was, uh, God, I was a kid working in a coffee shop that did vegetarian stuff, which I thought was really great. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Crap. Uh, drop in my rosemary, which is fun. Um, and I actually should get some brown sugar because I found that a lot of times you want to add a little bit of uh, spice, a little bit of salt, uh, and a little bit of sweet. So I should probably get that. So I've got this. I need to go ahead and do, um, oh, we're going to do some garlic. So get my, my fancy California cutting board, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and we're going to do some garlic. So I've got three cloves. I'm going to go ahead and crush these. And I always found the easiest way is to just crush them rather than trying to peel them. Because once you crush them, it just kind of all comes off. Um, let's see. I really like this knife set. Somebody sent it to me on the Amazon wish list. It's worked out really, really well. I know they're like really fancy ones or better ones or whatever, but I'm just happy with this. Because it has everything I need and they're sharp and uh, yeah. So I get to actually play in the kitchen, which I really want to do. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So this weekend for Easter, I'm going to go up and see my buddy Graham, who I haven't seen in forever, go see him and his family. They do a, uh, an Easter thing every year where they do uh, like an egg toss and just get people together and have meals and sometimes have a big bonfire and you know I need that because I've been so like in my head and here I want to get up and spend some time with friends and you know have some good stuff going on. But as you can imagine, uh, it gets I don't know I feel like there are a lot of distractions when we're not sure what we're doing. When you have like a family or when you have like a set role or when people you know it, it's easier when you're sure and I'm really not sure what I'm doing right now so. Trying to figure that out and trying to spend my time with the healthiest people I can find. Um, Alright, so we got some garlic. Um, I guess still have some fresh rosemary from the, the other day, so we're gonna go ahead and strip that and throw this rosemary in there. I know a lot of people use like um, Italian seasoning, which I think is probably good, but just really like anything fresh I can get. So since I had a friend who has a giant rosemary bush, I was like, you know what? That's what we're doing. And again, I usually use a little bit of spice with uh, whatever I'm doing and then a little bit of sweet. So a little bit of cayenne pepper, which seems kind of out of place, but I found it's really helpful. A whole lot of onion powder, although my onion powder is stuck, so hold on. Yeah. There we go. I remember uh, my buddy Kurt, who I'm actually going to see tomorrow as well as Graham. When we were in prison, he used to always do the cooking, and uh, he used to add so much onion powder, and he used to just mix things in the most random ways, but somehow it always came out really well. We uh, uh, one year we just got really lucky and ended up with like three holiday packs, which were these things you could get originally once a year and then twice a year and then four times a year when they realized they were making money. Um, so we had extra food and he just made these amazing meals every day. It would be like burritos or pizza or bagels or I'm going to add some um, lemon juice to, uh, I guess, help break it down. You're supposed to have the acidity, I think. I can't remember. I've done this, but I don't know that I know what I'm doing. I just uh, do stuff that tends to taste good, but... Wouldn't necessarily say that I have any idea where I'm going with it. Alright, uh, I'm going to get a little bit of brown sugar so we have some sweet. Uh, if I have any brown. Oh yeah, I do. Found it. A little bit of brown sugar. Um, yeah, and I'm just glad for that. Doesn't need to be a lot. Just a little bit to kind of like cake around the outside. Yeah, I remember uh, my buddy Jason told me this. I actually need to go see Jason, talk to him. 
But he said that everything should have sweet, sour, and uh, spice. And I found that to be really true. It really does add a little extra flavor to those. All right, now, let's take our steaks in here. And they're really thin, if you see. Like, I'm a little worried about how these do in the air fryer because they're so thin. But I'm hoping it's something we can figure out and do well, because I don't want them to burn. Probably would actually be better to just put in a pan and just like sear. And if I sear the outside, they'll probably be uh, cooked enough on the inside. But we're going to try this anyway, since we have since we have it. I figure I might as well get good at doing it. So go ahead and shake this up so it's mixed up. Set that there. I'm trying to get them to room temperature. That was one of the things I should have known, but even as a kid, I used to always think you just take the steak out of the fridge. You really do have to let it set at room temperature because otherwise it won't cook evenly and it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, all right, got the steak out of the way. Let me wash my hands and be sanitary. Wow. All right, so we've got this. We're going to do a salad, which when I'm only cooking for myself, I don't need a whole lot for a salad. I just do a single bowl. And we'll go from there. So we've got, what is the good for the day? I think it's going to be the exact same thing as yesterday, actually. But you know what? That's good enough for me. Oh, and I still have the rice from the, uh, what did I cook yesterday with the rice? Oh, the salmon. So I still have rice from that. Heat up and put it in there. Um, go ahead and make a base of spinach. I really do these spinach, these giant things of spinach from Costco are such a good deal. Uh, I just have to make sure I use them, but I, I put them in, um, uh, I put them in smoothies. I make, you know, spinach salad almost every night. I actually had a buddy of mine tell me that spinach is not healthy. You're not supposed to eat it all the time. And I don't remember why that was. Uh, and I should probably listen to him because he actually knows a lot of stuff, but I just really like spinach. So I may not always make the best tactical decisions. Um, go ahead and put some cucumber in here. Cucumber is one of my favorite. So when we got the um, uh, uh, the garden started for the SAM program in prison, which is one of the things I was probably most proud of, is actually being able to get a garden approved and set up where guys could, you know, garden and have their own food. And, and it ended up leading to problems and ended up like shutting it down and no longer letting us have the food. But I just thought it was such a cool thing. Um, but one of the things we grew a lot of was cucumbers, and not everybody loved them. So I would love when it was time to harvest and I could just, I would get a whole cucumber, I would bring it in, I would use my ID or something to cut it in half or even just break it in half and put salt on it. And it's so good. Like there is not a lot in this world that is as good as fresh cucumber with salt on it. Um, and especially in prison where so many things are not fresh or they're all processed or they're all old, to be able to get fresh food was just, it was just such a blessing. Like uh, not everybody appreciated it, not everybody like really cared, but I definitely did. It meant a lot to me. Um, and even things like celery, which I think don't actually have any like uh, nutritional value. They don't have any calories, but just adds a lot of taste. And I should actually wash this first because somebody's going to yell at me if I don't. Not that somebody's going to yell at me. It would actually be a smart decision to wash it. Like, that's responsible, and I'm working on being responsible. I just, I guess you just kind of get used to a lack of like hygiene or safety in prison. You get used to like bad water and bad food and bad conditions and mold. And it's just like, you know. After that, I feel like I can survive anything. I feel like, yeah, my immune system is probably a lot stronger in there than it is out here where I try to actually be hygienic and responsible. So maybe there's something to be said for wildly irresponsible living. Probably not. All right. A whole lot of this. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and wash the rest of these mushrooms because people wildly or pointed out that I did not wash them the last time and really should have. I know some people even have like the, the soap just for um, uh, vegetables or how, I don't know how that works, but it's probably a good decision. All right. Uh, somebody says whisk balsamic, olive oil, basil, rosemary. Yeah, dry time. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. That's basically what I did for this. Uh, just use soy sauce and balsamic along with the olive oil, uh, a little bit of spice, a little bit of brown sugar. But that stuff is so good and so easy. Um, it just, it really feels good to me to, to have a meal that feels like, I don't know, filling and healthy and good. And it's nice. This is going to be a giant salad. So I hope I'm really hungry and thankfully I am because otherwise God knows what I would do with myself. 
Alright, uh, we've got this. Like I said, we'll have to heat the rice up. I'll probably just do that in the microwave because it's easier. We have a big bowl. And for this, I'll go ahead and do, I'm probably just going to do balsamic and uh, oil. Or I might just do balsamic. That's what I do a lot of times and like a little bit of salt on top because I just really like the flavor. I'm going to set this off for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the steaks in the air fryer. Oh, I forgot my secret ingredient for the salad. Blueberries. I put fruit on top. I'm telling you, like it's the same thing I did last time, but it's going to be just as good. Uh, even with the, uh, what you think it wouldn't go with the dressing, it really does. Um, and now I still have a few blueberries to snack on if I get a midnight craving. Um, all right. Um, we're going to go ahead and stick these in the air fryer. I should probably like remove the other stuff first. I've always been impressed by those chefs or those, those cooks who like have everything in their kitchen organized and it's always on time and always right. Yeah, I've never been that person. You know, I usually prep stuff and pull it out, but then it's like, oh, well, what did I forget or what am I doing? And if anybody knows, I don't know how long it takes for the air fryer to heat up. I know it almost immediately says it's hot, but uh, I don't know that I believe that. So we're going to try these for 400 at I don't know, six minutes, eight minutes. I think 10 minutes would be like a real thick one. But uh, these are so thin, I don't think it's going to take long. And then with them being so thin, I'm kind of excited because it uh, will hopefully just sear really good with the 400 degrees and uh, get a good taste. But we'll see. All right. So over here, got salad done. I should do a dessert, but I don't ever really, uh, I don't know, I never really make desserts, although I do have some ice cream in there, so I may have uh, that set up for later. I was, I was talking to somebody that I really admire, and I was like, hey, man, I feel really good about the way I'm living and, and my diet and the exercise. And he was like, do you eat sugar? I was like, yeah, I eat ice cream. Like, it's good for you. He was like, no, no, sugar is a poison. And I was like, crap. Like, is there anything left we can just enjoy? <laughs> but, I mean, I do think it's important to look at health and diet. And I don't know. It's just sugar so great, it's kind of hard for me to imagine. All right. Let's pull this out. Because I guess it's warmed up. Like, it basically says it's warmed up. I don't know. We'll find out if that happens. I don't know, it's not steaming or searing, so I'm guessing it's not actually warmed up, but you know what, we're gonna find out. In the worst case, I just ruin them and I eat steak not cooked the way I'd like it to be cooked. But I think it'll be good. Alright, maybe I can get some of this good rosemary, garlic, stuff like that out. Oh god, this just looks good. We'll find out. Maybe it's a race, but I don't know about you. That just looks really good to me. All right, we're back in. All right. Go ahead and wash my hands again. Try to be responsible. Uh, yeah, this is all still just an adjustment. But it's really nice because of all the problems I've ever had, like trying to balance what I'm cooking for dinner, especially when I'm what I'm cooking for dinner is steak, is not one I ever imagined, so pretty grateful for having that uh, that be the issue. All right, now we can actually look at this. Um, so yeah, I have the salad. I'm going to do that. I need to stick this rice in the microwave. Go ahead and um, heat this up so it can plate properly. Although I should probably put the butter in there first. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me that. So uh, maybe a little bit of butter and salt. Ooh, I do that. Bit of butter so that way I can use the same fork because I'm so weird about that. I don't want to waste anything. I don't want to have to like wash anything new. But I will literally use the same utensil and like it's just I'm weird. Um, stick there. Get some salt. I know I have a friend who's doing this super healthy diet who can't eat salt at all. And I thought that, that was just absolutely insane because the body needs salt to function, right? Like that's that's how we I can't remember this. That's how we convert something into energy. Um, so it seemed really irresponsible, but you know what? I don't know everything. Uh, and hopefully I can just figure out what works for me rather than worrying about what works for other people. So we'll see. Alright, but yeah, with the fresh rosemary and the soy sauce and the balsamic, I think it's going to be good. Um, I don't know. But I'm excited about that. Let me see. Uh, people have made a lot of comments. We can figure out. Celery is nutritious. It just has a negative amount of calories once you digest it. Which I did not realize that. Um, open a window. I should open a window because I always set the smoke detector off. Oh, it's not smoking tonight. I did it last night with the salmon. It's not good. 
Um, so hopefully I can get to the point where I'm not setting the kitchen on fire every time I cook, which is probably pretty irresponsible. But yeah, but less to clean up is definitely the way I look at it. Like, and if I wasn't doing a, the live right now, I would normally be like washing dishes and trying to get everything ready and, and having things organized because I want to make it as easy as possible. Like, I don't know. Uh, it's really easy for me to cook for other people. Like when Courtney and I were together, I would cook dinner almost every night. Like she would be home from the radio late. I would have dinner ready. We would sit down. That was our time to talk. And when it's for somebody else, it's really easy for me to do it. I mean, it's the same reason when I was in the cell with Kurt in prison. He could cook these special meals, but man, I don't do it for myself. Like I'll just grab some yogurt and something. Or but I'm trying to make a point of saying, hey, I'm going to cook something for myself every day. And if I don't have time, well, yeah, I may just need to kind of like make it work. But I want to do something like, I want to eat healthy food, I want to have time where I'm reading, I want to focus on meditation, I want to focus on my health. Um, and part of that too is listening to my body, which is different. So, like, rather than killing myself working out all week, I've actually been like, hey, like, I don't feel like my shoulders can handle doing a heavy chest day, so like, I'm just not going to do it. So I think that's a good idea. It's a slow, uh, slow transition. What is it with the top half of the window? I don't know that. I don't think I can open the top half of my window. I've got the, like, big sliding windows. Um, and they actually, you can see them here. They open, but I don't think they open from the top. But you know what? I'm gonna go walk over here and we're gonna try. Let's see. Oh no. Oh, oh. Carrying the stand is apparently not as easy as just doing it. But yeah, what I usually do is just um, open this part. Oh. It's not too chilly. I just didn't want it to be too cold. Although uh, I guess I don't actually need the air conditioning anymore. It's been hot. It's been the 80s last couple days, which has been cool, but it's also been like, crap. You know, uh, how do you adjust it? I, yeah, I definitely need to get a different stand or just carry the phone around. Um, but it's nice. So uh, I think I'm going to ride up to see Graham when I go tomorrow. Um, uh, we'll work on the bike a little bit. There, I still need to get the frame sliders on and do a couple repairs. Uh, and he's got my old bike up there, and so hopefully we can get out and ride a little bit. And then we'll just do all the Easter stuff. You know, he and I and Kurt will hang out and kind of catch up. And it's strange because there were guys that I was really close to while I was inside, but it was a struggle once I got out or once they got out to kind of stay in touch. Like I remember Kurt, his joke was he like, he, yeah, he just sent me like inappropriate pictures of him doing things, um, and not like or anything he'd be like sitting on the toilet and just like show his face like hey bro i'm sitting on the toilet thinking of you oh by the way like i'm not sitting next to somebody crapping or i'm not locked in the cell crapping it's just it's like kind of way to tease or uh, make fun of me um but then once we're out it's so easy it's so easy to fall into that same level of comfort like when i was in and there's something about being in that disparate place like being one in and one out it's just hard to relate like i love some of the guys in there like so every time i take a phone call or every time i get a letter it can be hard to process it can be hard to deal with all right, let's see if we need to flip these. Oh God, they look good. Yep, round on the top. It might actually be too done by the time I pull them. We'll see. The top is really good and round, so we're gonna see. It, it says 10 minutes for a one inch steak, uh, but those are not, like the, the thinnest one is really thin, so they might end up being more than medium, uh, medium rare, which I really like, but I think it works. All right, so we got our rice. Put a plate this. Hot. Salt and butter. Oh, that's okay. I still have a little bit extra for tomorrow. Can't complain about that. Um, got the salad ready, so I'm going to go ahead and do the dressing. Like I said, I'm probably just going to do straight balsamic. Give it a little bit of salt. Maybe, maybe we'll just slurge and do a little bit of this too. I think, like, if you just buy it in bulk, it's cheap, but if you, uh, you know, buy oil and vinegar, it'll cost you like five times as much if you buy it mixed together. It shouldn't seem to make any sense, but I mean, was, I mean, this feels like a healthy dinner, like good salad, good steak. And then, oh, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna drink. I guess I'm just gonna drink water, because uh, yeah, if you look at my fridge, it's not very full. It's just kind of water and eggs and milk and yeah. So we're drinking water. And I have a Brita, thanks to my friend who insisted that I get a healthy thing, so. 
Take my big uh, mixing cup, and we're going to get some water. Um, one of these days I'll, uh, I don't know, actually, because that was pretty much all I drank inside. The only time I would drink soda or anything was when I was coming off the rec yard, and it was just absolutely crazy. Um, I would, uh, yeah, I would have a soda. It was just, there's something about the heat and, like, after a soccer game that would just feel really good. But, uh, yeah, I'm really hungry, so I'm really looking forward to this. So I think I'm going to pull it out, and as long as it's not rare or raw, I'm going to eat it. And I'm grateful that people are interested. Because this is a time that different, like, uh, TikTok was uh, the largest platform I had for the longest time, and it's just bizarre. Like, videos are getting a tenth of what they were. Some people are through the roof. Other people are just cut off completely. Everybody's complaining about being shadow banned or SEO stuff or whatever. It's just, it's kind of crazy. So... It's nice to be able to actually like connect with people and know that, especially if I'm talking about an important message, like Second Chance Month, which I think is huge. You know, April's been declared Second Chance Month, talking about the, the need to focus on other people having second chances and saying, you know, how do we unlock this key for other people? Like, how do we unlock this experience for others? And all the regulations. These are more than 42,000 regulations uh, in the country that limit people's access to education, to, uh, um, uh, excuse me, housing, to employment, things that just don't make sense. So, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to go do this, take the thickest one, and I'm going to see how this is. It's good and crispy on the edges. These I'm going to save for later, but actually, let's see if we can get some juices on here. All right, let's see if this is good. Um, so I'm going to take these to the table. Oh, shit. No, I can't believe it. Take these to the table and we're gonna have dinner and see how it tastes. Let's see. juice on it. Hopefully it ends up being as good as I'm thinking. Like I said, I may have uh, cooked it too long. These are so thin. I don't know how they're going to be. Yeah, I did. Damn it, I should have known. So it's not medium rare. It's actually more like well done, but we'll see if it's good. It's still pretty good. I was just thinking, because I'm not used to using this, I actually have to get the computer so I can see comments. So I'll have one more time, and then I'll be back. Uh, who would have thought? Get one of the soda stream water things. So I, I have a soda stream, uh, and I actually really like it, because I used to make fun of seltzer and think it was a waste. But I hadn't thought about mixing it with juice, or that would probably be good. Uh, you're looking for a new air fryer. I have um, God, I don't know the name or the brand of it. Uh, I'll check when I'm done. Um, yeah. True lemon, true lime, and true grapefruit packets. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. Probably just get some simple things. I know I met somebody who uses um, like hydration packages every morning, so that when you get up, you um, you like mix that with water, and it's supposed to help like improve the whatever your hydration or your your system balance. Oh, that's pretty good. Mmm. But now we're going to see this. So I think the moral of the story, though, is if, um, if I'm doing the air fryer, I, I probably, like I said, the steak, I probably should have just seared it, like put it on a really hot pan and just seared it on both sides and it would come out medium rare and been good, but it's so good as it's a salad. Mmm. Use Mio with vitamins. Yeah, I've never heard of that either. Yeah, I think, you know, there's so many things out there, and I just want to get exposed to them because I don't really know what they all are. Uh, you know, so different, uh, like I said, just a diet. Uh, you know, I've got a friend who's just doing an only raw diet, and, and it's only no salt, no sugar, no whatever. I mean, it seems crazy and extreme to me, but I can notice when people seem lighter and happier and more energetic, and so I'm interested in that.
And I generally feel like I work out too much to just eat vegetables. I need meat, but... There are definitely some vegetarians and vegans who manage to do really well like that. But I had a really good uh, jujitsu class this afternoon. So there's open mat, which is where you basically go and just get to do what you want or focus on what you want or just free roll. And uh, I rolled with the instructor, and he's just so good. I mean, he's he's literally been a black belt for like 12 years, which means he's been doing it for 20-some years. I mean, it's just somebody who's so dedicated. And there's another guy who I train with in the morning and the afternoon who's also a black belt. And it's, you know, it doesn't matter how much bigger or stronger or whatever I am than them, they just absolutely destroy me. And so it's just trying to find those little details of where I can get better or how I can do things. So, Me love corn and mashed potatoes? That sounds really, really good. Mm. Um, I do have a shipping address or mailing address. It's P.O. Box 6755, Charlottesville, Virginia. It's on my link tree. If you go to the profile page, just have the link to the link tree, and it should be up there at the top. Uh, from Roanoke? I didn't know you were in Roanoke, Lisa. Hmm. Uh, I don't put tangerine in my salad, but that's a good idea. I put uh, blueberries in this one because I wanted to have uh, some kind of fruit, but that's a, that would probably be good. What in the health? Okay. I need, I'm need. i trying to get... <laughs> I'm the only person in the world who's trying to get in the habit of watching TV because I want to read more, but I know sometimes at the end of the day when I'm just burnt out, it helps so much to just... Just like shut my brain down and just watch TV or just do something simple. Well, I would definitely like to get to that point. The package is on the way. Well, thank you. I managed to pull out uh, my spices tonight to get some stuff going. And somebody else told me to come by. I've been so lucky as far as like food and, and, and uh, the things I need to cook. You know, my friends at the restaurant, when I, when I said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm setting my house up. They like pulled me in the back and like put together this whole care package and I'd walk there because it's not that far from my house. And I'm like walking back with this 50 pound thing full of like kitchen grade uh, cooking utensils, which was awesome. Other people want to give me spices or say, hey, come by the house or come by the restaurant. It's just been amazing. Mm. From Michigan. Who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody recently in Michigan. Told me to come up there. Um, I was talking to a, actually a candidate for sheriff who was trying to be elected to reform the, the criminal justice system. And then somebody locally uh, close to Detroit was talking about a, a political thing. I, don't know. I just get the weirdest emails. Like today I had a discussion with a guy who runs a nonprofit providing uh, flight training for veterans because they found it's really important to give people structure and identity and, and community when they get out. Um, and it's the same thing for people getting out of prison. So I'd love to find that where there would probably be barriers to previously incarcerated people becoming pilots I would love to find training programs that create the same sense of like identity and meaning that people are all looking for. And unfortunately, a lot of times people get the identity of being a, a prisoner or being a this or you know, these things that are labeled from the outside rather than being the healthiest person. And if we can give them an identity as like an engineer or an electrician, or a, it, it's really helpful. And there's a local community group, that uh, um, a local business that works really well. They, they go into prisons and train people. Uh, they hire apprentice, uh, apprentices coming out. Like they're just, they're wonderful. It's called Design Electric. So. Uh, it's 1 a.m. there? Why, why are you should definitely be sleeping? There's no way I'm more exciting than sleeping. I am someone who loves sleep with a passion, so I would highly recommend sleeping. There you go. You're an electrician. Where are you at, Robert? Oh, Boston. Huh. You already said that. I'm actually coming to Boston in May. Um, May 22nd, I believe. So Monday, uh, I'm speaking at the Boston Public Library, which is going to be really cool. I'm going to put together some promo stuff for it, but I was really grateful for that opportunity. I was really impressed because I talked to the Office of Returning Citizens up there, which is what they do to help re-entry, and they're amazing. They have a two-year plan, and they deal with housing, and they deal with employment and services. They do training classes, uh, parenting classes, connect people with their families. Like They do amazing work to bring people together. I just think it's so important. Look out for your beard. I got you. I've never been in the public library, so I don't know what space I'm looking at. Like, am I looking at a small room? Like, okay, that's one thing. Or am I looking at the giant amphitheater? Or it was like when I went to South by Southwest, I was in one of the, like, medium rooms. They had, like, the small rooms, the medium rooms, and then the massive, like, thousand seat, whatever. And I didn't know what to expect. So when I, when I went to my talk, I saw people lined up, and I was like, well, what are they doing? And they were like, they're waiting to see you. And I was like, that's really exciting and uncomfortable and weird. And But it was such a good experience. And I think it'll be in Boston, too. 
just like, you know, sometimes I'll go to a, a college class. Sometimes I'll go, you know, speak in kind of like a media science auditorium in, in the university. Like anywhere I go, the fact that people are there and interested and we can connect and have questions and conversations. It's just been, it's been such an amazing thing that I never imagined happening. But a gorgeous, ginormous room. Sounds good. No, I should probably do this more often because I was thinking if I'm going to eat dinner, it doesn't, it's not any harder to eat dinner and interact with people and meet people. 2 a.m. in Essen. Yeah, you should definitely make a, um, you should definitely make a steak and salad. Highly recommend it. Even if it's 2 in the morning, why not? Uh, but yeah, I was really impressed with the conversation with the guy from the nonprofit. You know, because he's doing great work to help veterans. And, you know, what he said that, that really helped me was he said he appreciates my message because it kind of, it explains the experience that a lot of people don't know how to explain. You know, that experience of separation from an identity or separation from structure, separation from routine, and the emotional chaos and just how few resources are available for veterans getting out of the service. I mean, the, the, the rate of self-harm, the rate of, you know, kind of self-destruction is so high. And so often it's because there's this toxic culture and it was, I was talking to a chef about it the other day. It's the same in the kitchen. It's like, you don't go to therapy, you drink. Like, you don't do that. There's just this toxic culture about not dealing with our problems or not doing the things we need to do. I think it's really unfortunate. All right. All right, if you're eating chocolate, I feel like you're probably doing better than me. But, you know, I, really, I had a really big shift this past weekend. I've been really trying to focus on, like, where I need to go and what I need to do and with so many things going on, um, with trying to figure out the clear direction of the nonprofit, with other projects I'm pitching, and just I felt this huge sense of responsibility. And I was waking up every day with my chest tight, like just anxious and miserable, and my neck hurt. And it was like I have to do something differently. Like I can't keep doing this. This isn't working. So I'm I'm trying to spend more time, you know, eating meals. I'm trying to spend more time reading. I'm trying to spend more time just walking. Not like oh I'm going to maniacally exercise until I can't breathe. Like I'll do that three times a week, but the other times, maybe I'll just go for a walk and like go get a cup of coffee at the end or come back here and have a cup of coffee. I've been trying to spend time like walking with friends or going to get coffee with friends when I have time. Um, but I just, I notice it's like so many people, um, it, it's hard to find that place where I can connect with people that's healthy because a lot of times when I go out, like everybody just wants to drink and party and like that's cool. It's just, I don't want to be somewhere where alcohol is a central focus. I don't want to be somewhere where uh, any. Basically, I want the central focus to be like human interaction and conversation and like playfulness and, and enjoyment. So I really like going to trivia because we all get competitive and have fun. Like that's a good environment. Um, some other places are good and I have good conversations, but it's, it, it can be hard. I think a lot of places, but especially in our town, it seems like drinking is the hobby. And it's like, I don't want that to be a hobby. Like I don't want that to be the central activity. Like let's do a game night. Uh, like somebody from my gym is putting together a game night for the end of the month. I'm looking forward to that because a bunch of like crazy jujitsu people playing like ridiculous adult games or I don't know, probably kids games, who knows? I just feel like that's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Homemade chowder stew sounds really good. Um, somebody asked about the pup. So if, if you guys don't know, uh, I made the video about Scout. Scout is not actually my dog. I was visiting a friend and I just fell in love with him. But Scout is, it's got my heart. But I have been seeing Luke a lot. I saw Luke today. Uh, he actually didn't want to get up and move. He uh, Sometimes he's really lazy. Sometimes he's spoiled. But Luke is doing pretty well. You know, he's got so many health issues and he's got arthritis. And I really worry about it because, you know, I, I love that dog. I want him to be okay. I don't want to lose him. But, you know, we all get older and we all have problems. So yesterday when he went for a walk, he was doing really well. Um, today, not so much. But... Now, we do what we can. I'm just grateful that I'm in a place where, you know, where I can see the dog, where we can, you know, we can be co-parent the dog, I guess. I actually should look at going over there tonight because if you got a friend coming in bringing another dog, it's going to be crazy, so maybe I'll try to help walk him tomorrow or something. Hmm. Well, goat yoga? Goat yoga sounds good. I like that. Walking with friends really is kind of a therapy. I found that good activities with good people just makes such a huge thing. Um, yeah. That's where I can find that. I'm sorry. I always get texts coming down the screen, so I get distracted. But 
you know, I, I think about the activities that really feel fulfilling to me, and they are walking with friends, they're doing jujitsu in the gym with people that I really like, and being like competitive and playful, and uh, you know, that just feels fulfilling. You know, I've got a couple motorcycle people I ride with. Actually, I invited one of my buddies over for uh, for steak. I was like, hey man, I'll cook you and your son steak. Like, you want to come over and hang out? But I haven't heard back from him. But I realize I have to do those things in advance. I can't just spontaneously decide at six o'clock that I want somebody to come eat steak. But I guess that's the advantage of being single or being in the position I'm in is that I can do that. I'm, I'm trying to. Because a lot of times I feel like I need permission for things. And like technically I do. I need permission to go out of state. But I feel like when I was going up to see my buddy this weekend, I was like, well, I don't know if I can. And like, but I got to check. And but there's nobody to check with. Like, I'm responsible for my own life. Like, it's in state, so I'm allowed to go there. But I get caught up in things. I'm still in this mentality of all those years of being inside and that institutionalization where I feel like I need position or permission to do things or I need to check with somebody or I need to have somebody tell me what to do. And it can be hard to take responsibility for my own life. And, you know, a lot of people will be really critical. But what I found is that we have a system that doesn't prepare people to do that. People get out and are shocked by, you know, the, the issues of autonomy or the issues of choice or the issues of whatever. And we don't prepare people to be successful upon release. And honestly, we don't prepare people in school. Like, we don't even teach financial literacy in half our schools. We don't teach social emotional learning in most of our schools. Like, we don't teach people the basic things they need to know. It's great that we teach algebra or that we teach the SOL or whatever. But, like, what about the basic skills of, like, emotional regulation and communication and interpersonal effectiveness? Just, you know, the things that would probably benefit people in every arena of their life. Mm -hmm. mm. Hey, Brian. I really like the apartment. My buddy came by last night, actually. He and his girlfriend came by. Had a great time. It's nice to have a space that's mine. And also have a... How do I describe it? It, it feels like home now. Like, when I first got in here, I didn't know it felt uncomfortable. I didn't know what I was going to do. But now it really feels like home. That's such an awesome feeling. For the longest time, it was hard to like figure out where a home would be or what that would even look like. Because for all those years, it felt like I didn't have one. I remember when I was inside and my mom moved, and that was like that was my home, right? She moved, and it was like, okay, well, like I don't have a childhood home anymore. I don't have the place that I grew up in. Um, and so I, I felt just like lost and kind of rudderless for a long time. And I'm here now, and I'm not here forever. I think I have at least until like next April, but. I'm somewhere that feels like, okay, this is where I want to be. Um, and, I, you know, I want to make sure that I have, you know, good friends around me and surround that. Um, but I've been really lucky. You know, people that I've met online, I, I've got a guy that I have a conversation with every Friday by Zoom. Uh, and he lives, you know, 3,000 miles away, 4,000 miles away. But we connect every week and we've built a friendship that's important and valuable and, and means the world to me. Um, and then, you know, I have people locally, people that I walk with, you know, once a week or people that I, I try to have coffee with. And that just, that helps. And that's really what I found is that, we have this myth of self-reliance and it's great. We shouldn't need people like in the sense that we rely on them or expect them to do things for us, but we're social creatures. No, I, I don't live on an island. Like I can't do it all myself. I can't only think about myself. I have to think about myself in community because if I don't, I'm never really going to be happy. Like I'm always going to be living like half of a life or I guess we think of it as like a tripod. Like in Buddhism, they say, um, uh, the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, uh, in life, I kind of feel like it's, you know, we have whatever our, our self, our interest or whatever, and then we have community, and then we have, I think, some larger purpose or larger connection to nature. Or, I don't know. My teacher has a whole different model about this that I probably just butchered because I think he has five things, but I think it's just recognizing that we operate in different systems, and we have to value each of those systems, like ourself, maybe the family unit, maybe the community, maybe, you know, some professional unit, but just figuring out what those are and honoring the roles because... You know, I want to be good at what I do professionally. I want to be good at what I do personally. I want to be good at relationships. I want to be good at being a friend. I want to be good at all that. Um, and it takes a lot of practice. So. Uh, Brian, I would love to grab lunch again soon. Uh, yeah, Burger Bach in Guajiros. So Guajiros is a little Cuban place. Um, uh, in downtown Charlottesville, it's, it's awesome. They do, it's weird because I expected them to do dinner, but they do like breakfast and lunch, which I think is really cool. Uh, and then uh, Burger Bach, which I think it's a chain. They're some of the best burgers I've had, so. I'm down, buddy. Let's do it. Although what I found is 95% of the time, I can actually do better or make better food at home for cheaper than, than going out. But uh, every now and then you'll find that place that's just like hands down amazing. There are a couple in Charlottesville. 
went to a topless place last week or the week. Yeah, I guess last week. And man, it was good. Like it was just all these things that I would never make at home. And because they're top, it's just a small portion. So it's just a bunch of little different things. It was so good. Because it's like, if you're just going out to get a steak, you might as well just cook the steak at home. Like it's going to be a lot cheaper. I don't know, Brian and I, last time we went to Texas Roadhouse, and I gotta admit, it was not, it was, it was fairly cheap, like it was perfectly reasonable, so I thought that was good. But, hmm. Well, now I'm getting a little self conscious of eating on camera, and I've got a lot of salad left, so again, I just wanna say thank you all for spending the evening with me, because I'm trying to transition to spending more time, you know, at home by myself. Because I realized that the focus is, I need to be ready for whatever's next in my life. I need to come into being comfortable with who I am and what I want to do in the world and who I want to be. And then I'll be able to look at like having relationships or you know big career moves or big geographic moves. But if I don't spend that time alone or I don't spend that time in kind of like healthy relationship with other people, I'm not going to figure anything out. I'm just going to constantly be like going through my mind or doing crazy things. So I, uh, I'm enjoying this. I'm really enjoying kind of resettling and... Uh, you know, I got my little social fix at the gym today, and now I'm back in the place where I need to be. I'm going to try to finish the Murakami book. Um, I've got a, a load of other books. I was, I was sitting down the other day, like, uh, resting for a second, and I saw I have a bookshelf full of books that I want to read, and I'm not reading. It's like, that's a huge resource. Why am I wasting that? So I'm going to try to make time every night to read, and then maybe even a little bit to watch TV. Just don't judge me. But I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful night, and enjoy. Yeah.